the, the mechanics of the joint motion. So if you have an anterior pinching or anterior compression problem in the mortis joint, most people will go right to the anterior aspect of the castle and try to peel away or try to release tension in the area of the injury or the area of the pain. But you have to remember that when you're talking about joint mechanics, if a joint is free to move, you'll have no compression on either side of the joint. So in this case, superior and inferior side, there'll be no joint compression. Okay? However, if the inferior part of the joint in this situation is tight, it will not allow that rotation to occur. So right when we get to the end of motion, it'll actually cause a compression to occur on the contralateral side of the joint. Okay? So this occur occurs in various areas in the body. When you go into a, a Kemp's position and you get a pinching in the cervical spine, in the joint, you actually have to also look at the contralateral side of the joint. So you would look at longus coli, longus capitis, you look at the anterior fascia. Okay? Similarly, in the ankle, if you're getting an anterior pinch with dorsiflexion, you're going to want to look at the posterior capsule of the ankle joint. If you free up the posterior capsule, you'll allow that joint to, to move and you'll uh, prevent that pinching from occurring. Same thing occurs with uh, people that have um, um, impingement syndrome. If you're impinging on the superior aspect of the joint, sure, you're going to want to treat the result of the impingement, the supraspinatus tendinosus or tendinopathy or problem, but you're also going to want to check the inferior and posterior aspect of the capsule, which is causing the humerus to rise up into the acromial foot. Does that make sense? So when you're treating a joint, if there's impingement on one side, you have to look for restriction in motion on the contralateral side as well.